Our project is Monocular Depth Estimation using Deep Learning and it was presented by me, Gopal Krishna and my teammate, Gaurav Bevra. So the problem here we are tackling is uh, depth estimation. Uh, depth estimation is generally done in a stereo setup where there are two cameras looking at the same image. Uh, correspondences are found in the left and the right image and matching is performed. There is a baseline distance between the two cameras which is used to then triangulate the distances of the objects in the scene from the camera using geometrical properties. Although this works well, setting up a good stereo camera setup is not trivial and everyday cameras we use uh, are, are in non-stereo setting like mobile cameras or webcams. Uh, so this makes it an interesting problem to tackle in a single image setup and that is what monocular depth estimation is about. Uh, molecular depth estimation has its own challenges. There are a lot of global and local visual cues that need to be learned uh, to effectively estimate depth from a single image. A single image has objects at different scales and we cannot simply apply geometrical transformations to get a depth estimate. Hence, most of the work done in molecular depth estimation are model based approaches where a model tries to look at a single 2D image and give an estimate of the depth at each pixel level. Uh, now my teammate Angaurav will illustrate how this is done. So uh, for the experiment we will be using uh, the most commonly used data sets for this monocular depth estimation which are NYU depth V2 and KT. So about NYU depth V2, the NYU depth V2 data set is comp comprised of video sequences for variety of indoor scenes and it has both RGB images and depth uh, depth images which is captured using Microsoft Kinet. It has somewhere around 1449 densely labeled pairs of aligned RBG and depth images. About Kitty, Kitty is a collection of stereo images and corresponding 3D laser scans of outdoor scenes. RBG images have a resolution of approximately 1241 by 376 fixed resolution. So in terms of um, in this project, we will be basically using supervised learning based approach. So supervised learning is uh, the process in which we use label data set for both input and and uh, there is a pair we send which is an input and a ground truth in our case the input would be rbg image and a depth map the model will be tra will be trained to get optimized parameters and we will be using different optimizers the most commonly used optimizer is gradient descent in all the machine learning supervised models and here the optimizer basically tries to update the variables using a backward propagation approach using chain rule and through this we basically get the optimized parameters during training the algorithm will search for patterns in the data that correlate with the desired outputs after training a supervised learning algorithm will take an unseen input image as test image and will determine the label associated with that image. So next, we will be basically dealing with encoder decoder models in this. Uh, encoder decoder model is a way of using convolutional neural network for image to image perception problem. <clears throat> uh, encoder is a network which in CNN on RNN that takes input and an output uh, and outputs a feature map vector or tensor the feature vector holds the information that represents the input and that input is basically after uh, generating the feature map is sent to a latent space representation which is a compressed form of information this latent space then uh, sends to a, re, uh, a decompressed image to a reconstruction layer which is basically the decoder the decoder basically takes the feature vector from the latent space and then tries to construct the image which is the closest match to what the input was intended to be the encoders are trained with the along with the decoders the loss function is based on computing the delta between the actual and the reconstructed input the optimizer will try to train both encoder and decoder to lower this reconstruction loss. 
so uh, as a baseline for this experiment we will be using unit model so unit was basically has always been used for image segmentation related work and it was originally proposed for abnormality localization in medical images it has the ability for pixel level localization and distinguishes unique patterns it looks like a u shaped structure where we term the first part as encoder and the second part or the later part as decoder and each block of decoder is connected to corresponding block of encoder using a using a skip connection so uh, as our project involves a, a lot of uh, large scale images there are chances we might uh, end up having some technical issues and our model might not work properly so in that case we basically come up with image augmentation techniques for altering the existing data and to create more useful data for the training purpose in other words this is the process of artificially expanding the available data set for training a deep learning model it acts as a regularizer, regularizer and helps reducing overfitting when the training of machine learning happens machine learning model happens as the size of the data in our experiment is smaller than what we expected so to train the deep learning model we rely heavily on data augmentation techniques to counter the effect of small data set we do so by performing geometric and photometric transformations so geometric transformations include applying horizontal or vertical flip this would contribute in uh, a learning of expected statistical properties for photometric transformation we followed color channel permutation uh, which is uh, a very commonly used techniques in most of the related works of molecular depth estimation so now gopal will explain about transfer learning um transfer learning is a machine learning method where a model developed for a task is reused as the starting point for a model on a second and often similar task generally retained models are used uh, that allow rapid progress of or improved performance when modeling the new task and um, this has been a very popular technique in deep learning because of the enormous resources of the large data sets that are required to actually train deep learning models well uh, it is popular in computer vision as well to use some baseline model pretrained on some benchmark data set for example uh, we commonly uh, use uh, model trained on image image net uh, quite popularly and they, and they work surprisingly well for many computer vision tasks uh, so we have also leveraged transfer learning in our experiments and studied its, its effects from the output um, so densnet densnet is a type of convolutional neural network that utilizes dense connections between the layers through dense blocks and uh, where we connect all the layers with matching feature map sizes directly with each other in other words as you can see in the image uh, in the image features from all the dense blocks are connected and passed to the features in the subsequent dense block layers this this leads to a error signal being easily propagated uh, to the earlier layers um more directly this is kind of uh, implicit deep supervision as earlier layers can get direct supervision from the final classification layer uh, we'll talk more about deep supervision later in the slide um, we used densnet 169 architecture as the encoder in most of our experiments and train it on the in the encoder decoder uh, setting as explained by gaurav this architecture is trained on the imagenet data set and works quite well in extracting meaningful features from the uh, images uh, our model has a decoder that upsamples the compressed latent space features back to the original input size and we trained this model in two different settings uh, one having the densnet parameters freeze and another where the densnet parameters were set to trainable Uh, we then compared the performances that yielded some very interesting results that i'm going to talk about in the results section uh, so deep supervision deep supervision is nothing but adding companion objective functions at each hidden layer of a network and then computing the final loss as not only the output loss but also as the sum of the companion losses 
so what this does it it's motivates the hidden layers of the network to learn independently of the output layer such that the output layer is not tasked with learning everything and most informative feature transformations for uh, smaller training data relatively and relatively shallow networks deep supervision functions also as a regularization technique uh, for classification accuracy and learned features uh, we have briefly experimented with deep supervision in our project by using output from the last two or three layers of the decoder upsampling them to match the input size and comparing them with the same losses as the original gra uh, original output mm. Uh, now we'll talk about the results. Uh, we we only discuss the most interesting results that we got over the course of this project. Uh, so we train our encoder decoder model with DenseNet backbone for about hundred epochs, with learning rate set to zero point zero zero one, and using Adam optimizer. The loss curves are shown in the image, and as we can see, due to limited number of images, the validation loss and the training loss diverge quite early. That is the validation loss saturates while the training loss keeps on decreasing. Uh, after this training, we tested some images from our test set uh, with the results as shown. We can see although our model doesn't achieve state of the art um, results, but it has started to capture general relative depth as you can see with corresponding yellow and purple regions in both the ground truth and the prediction. You can see the same here. Uh, it has started to get some notion of the depth relative depth uh, and also you can see that not only uh, that our model has also uh, not only the model started modeling uh, relative depth but it also started to model sharp edges uh, like likes of which you can see here uh, around this object uh, around this shelf here um, and we believe that this performance while not good enough but it can be vastly improved with more data and better hyperparameter search another noteworthy result that we observed and would like to discuss is that the model performs much better with pre-trained encoder parameters that is when the encoder is not made trainable which is a further testament to the power of transferred learning there were there, there just wasn't enough data for the encoder to learn from scratch so it did a better job when used with image net weights we also experimented with different data augmentation methods that Gaurav discussed uh, vertical flip didn't uh, make any sense in our case because uh, the position of the floor and the objects is uh, important visual cue while estimating depth so we only use horizontal flip uh, and that indeed led to a small improvement in the performance uh, more detailed results can be found in the paper for the project report uh, so the, for the future scope of our work, uh, we would like to explore the Kitty dataset and training with more data, uh, which would I think which would lead the model to converge and uh, provide close to state of the art results. We can also improve upon the current architecture. We could not uh, uh, train a lot of architectures given the limited amount of time, but we would like to explore other research work that has uh, taken place. Um, we would like to try better augmentation techniques and our end goal would be obviously to uh, do real-time depth estimation on indoor and output outdoor uh, video sequences that can be used in autonomous driving and things like that. Um, thank you for listening to the presentation.